Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Okay, so last week I talked about the three main partisan positions that are going to be up for election. That would be the governor, the attorney general, and the secretary of state. This week's video, I want to talk about the main nonpartisan positions that are up for election. We're going to focus on the Michigan State Supreme Court. So in Michigan, we get to elect our state Supreme Court justices. We elect them to eight year terms and they're nonpartisan. That means they're not running as a Republican or a Democrat. However, they are nominated by their party's conventions. So this midterm election, we get to vote for two Supreme Court justices. The Republican Party has nominated two, the Democrat Party has nominated two, and the Libertarian Party has nominated one. So there's gonna be five people running for Supreme Court justice and we get to vote for two of them. All right, here are the five candidates that are up for election. Richard Bernstein and Brian Zahara are the incumbents. That means they're currently on the state Supreme Court and they're running for re-election. Richard Bernstein is a Democrat. Brian Zahara is a Republican. Kyra Harris Bolden is a Democrat. Paul Hudson is a Republican. And Carrie Lee Morgan is a Libertarian. We're going to take a look at some of the funding that's going behind this. Okay, the most recent report on the funding, Kyra Harris Bolden has actually raised the most money, just under half a million. She's probably raised more by now. Paul Hudson's raised $450,000. Most of this money came from himself. Brian Zahara has $435,000. Richard Bernstein, $414,000. Carrie Lee Morgan has no money at all. Okay, first we're going to take a look at incumbent Richard Bernstein. Here he is. This is his election website. He was elected to the Michigan Supreme Court in 2014. He became the first blind justice. But let me tell you something. Richard Bernstein is a rubber stamp vote. He always votes in line with Governor Gretchen Whitmer and President Joe Biden. He is one of the most liberal people on the state Supreme Court. You can always count on him to vote in line with the radical left. In regards to the Reproductive Freedom for All and the Promote the Vote initiative, Richard Bernstein was one of the people that voted in line with the Chief Justice Bridget McCormick to force those two petitions onto the midterm ballot, even though they didn't meet the legal requirements to be on the ballot. We'll talk a little bit more about that later on. Let's move on to Kyra Harris Bolden. So she's a Democrat. She's running for Supreme Court justice. Currently, she's a member of the Michigan House of Representatives representing District 35. She came into office in 2019. Some of the things she has wanted to do while she's in the House of Representatives is to make universal free birth control because she wants you to have to pay for her birth control medicine. She constantly pushes soft on crime legislation. She's signed on to bills to allow criminals out of the jails. So if you're happy with the amount of crime going on in the state of Michigan, and if you want to pay for universal birth control, then she's the candidate for you. She would be just like Richard Bernstein on the Supreme Court. If we go down to the finances, we'll see something pretty interesting. One of the people on her payroll is Jennifer Soros. This is a relative to the George Soros family. She's paid her already at least $2,500. I just want to put that out there. A lot of people talk about George Soros and dark money coming into elections. Well, somehow the Soros family is tied to Kyra Harris Bolden. I want you to keep that in mind when you're making your decision who you're voting for. Okay, this is Brian Zahara. He's a great justice. He was appointed by Governor Rick Snyder to the Michigan Supreme Court in 2011. The people of Michigan elected him in 2012 to a partial term. Then he was reelected in 2014 to a full term. Now, Justice Zahara has been a great justice. He's following the law and he has the courage to dissent from the liberal majority. What we're looking at here is the official outcome from when the Reproductive Freedom for All sued to the Michigan Supreme Court. Now what happened was Reproductive Freedom for All failed to follow the law when trying to get an initiative onto the ballot. Their initiative was filled with typos, particularly they forgot to put spaces in between words, so you just had massive run on words and it amounted to gibberish that couldn't be read. So the Michigan Board of State Canvassers did not certify it, meaning it did not meet the criteria to be on the midterm ballot. However, when they sued to the Michigan State Supreme Court, the liberal majority forced this onto the ballot. Richard Bernstein, he voted to 
force it onto the ballot. He didn't care about the law. Justice Brian Sahara was brave enough to dissent, and this is what he wrote. I want to skip down here in his dissent, and I want to come to this paragraph when he specifically addresses what Richard Bernstein had signed on to. Justice Bernstein advocates that all doubt should be resolved in favor of allowing the people to vote. While this position clearly has populist appeal, it ignores the requirements of our election law, which is predisposed against granting ballot access where the Board of State Canvassers fails to grant certification. Now this is very important. We have to decide as a state, do we want a Supreme Court that follows the law or do we want a Supreme Court that makes up the law? This is what we're voting for. A vote for Richard Bernstein is a vote for a type of justice who just makes up the law from the bench, an activist judge who will make up the law. Or Brian Zahara, a neutral justice. He's not pushing a political agenda. He follows the law as written. You have to decide who do you want on your Supreme Court. Okay, and this is the other Republican candidate, Paul Hudson. We'll look at his biography. He earned his bachelor's degree from Cornell in 2003. He got his law degree from Georgetown in 2006. Here's Paul Hudson's website. Here's his family. He is the grandson of legendary Michigan State football coach Duffy Daughtery. Now, this is his judicial philosophy, and this is what I was just talking about. He draws his inspiration from his baseball background to help explain his approach and philosophy towards judging. He believes a judge is like an umpire. A good judge doesn't make up the rules or change them mid-game. A good judge just calls balls and strikes, faithfully applying the rules as written, fairly, consistently, and without favoring one side or the other. That's what I was just talking about. We have to decide as a state, do we want a Supreme Court that follows the law as written, or do you want a Supreme Court that just makes the law up like they've been doing under the radical left leadership of the Supreme Court? Now, in one of my previous videos, we talked about how the current Chief Justice, Bridget McCormick, is resigning. She could be resigning because she'll be taking a job that's going to be roughly a million dollars, or it could be that her conscience is actually getting to her because she knows that under her leadership, the Michigan State Supreme Court has just been violating the law repeatedly. That's why this nonpartisan section of the ballot is so important. Do we want a Supreme Court that follows the law? or one that doesn't follow the law, because that's what it's coming to. Okay, and the fifth and final candidate that we're gonna talk about, Carrie Lee Morgan. Now this is the only candidate nominated by the Libertarian Party, and he's actually run for Supreme Court justice in the past, and that's what I want us to look at right now. We're gonna scroll down. Okay, this is the 2020 election. These two won election, they are both Democrats. Bridget McCormick went on to become the Supreme Court Chief Justice, and she just resigned from her job. Elizabeth Welch is also a Democrat. So the two Democrats won. Now I want you to look at their vote totals. Mary Kelly was a Republican. Brock Swartzel was also a Republican. Look at these votes. She was very close to beating Elizabeth Welch. Now Carrie Lee Morgan and Katie Nepton ran as the two Libertarian candidates. They Carrie received 340,000 votes. Katie received 290,000. Now had these votes gone to Mary Kelly, she would have easily beaten Elizabeth Welch, and we would have a different composition on our state Supreme Court. So take note of that. In 2020, the Libertarian candidates split the ticket and caused the Democrats to beat the Republicans and take over the Supreme Court. We're going to go back even further. Okay, here's 2018. We see a similar thing happen here. Okay, Elizabeth Clement won. She's listed as a Republican. She's really a rhino. I don't even consider her as a Republican. Megan Kavanaugh, she won. Take a look at the votes. Look at how close this is. She just barely, just barely beat out Curtis Wilder, a good conservative judge. He would have been great. Now look, Carrie Lee Morgan picked up 360,000 votes. If just a little bit, just a little bit, had gone to Curtis Wilder, he would be on the bench right now and we would have a drastically different Supreme Court. That's one of the problems with the Libertarian Party is they are splitting the ticket and they're drawing votes away from the Republican Party, drawing them towards the Libertarian. And look, we're seeing that he's losing by massive amounts. He's not even close. He's not even in the ballpark. He's just taking away votes 
that would cause the Republican to get elected. Now, one last thing I want to talk about before I end the video. With the Chief Justice Bridget McCormick resigning from her position, what's going to happen is after the election, the governor, Gretchen Whitmer, will get to appoint someone to the state Supreme Court. That person will be up for re-election in 2024. Now, let's say Kyra Harris Bolden does not win and she's not elected. It's very likely that Gretchen Whitmer will appoint her. And so even if she's not elected, it's very, very likely that she will end up on the Supreme Court anyways. The thing about Kyra Harris Bolden, she's also a rubber stamp for Governor Gretchen Whitmer and Joe Biden. Look, if you're unhappy with the rising gas prices, the inflation, the high cost of groceries, if you're unhappy with the amount of crime, then the choices are obvious. The Democrats are in control of the government. They've got the federal government. They've got the state government. If you want to change, don't keep voting for the same type of political candidates. And that's why this nonpartisan section is so important. These justices are elected for eight years. That's a very long amount of time. So you have to be really certain that who you're voting for is going to be a good justice. All right, that's just going to about wrap it up. Leave a like on the video. Comment down below. Tell us what you think. Do you want a justice who's going to follow the law as written? Or do you want an activist judge who's going to make up the law and take away your voice? If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe. It really helps us out. Remember, Michigan is your state and this is your news.